Do you ever find yourself working on a DIY project and realize you need an electrical enclosure and then go to scour Amazon to find that a 12 by 12 inch one costs $60? I think that's a bit outrageous. And on this episode of DIY vs. Buy, we're going to be designing a fully 3D printable electrical enclosure that is also out of ABS. We're going to be using this nice 12 inch by 12 inch sheet of steel to start off. So let's get into it. Here's a quick time lapse of me kind of designing the rough frame in SolidWorks. In total, this is about an hour or so of design time, just kind of sped up over 10,000%. I was referencing the rat rig electric enclosure, but making sure that all the parts were long enough, or short enough, I guess, to be 3D printable. And here's the final design that we ended up with. We've got three spots for fans, we've got a lid, We've got the power supply, we've got the Big Tree Tech Octopus, a Raspberry Pi, and a power adapter. Here's what the base frame looks like. So it's four 3D printed plates, along with four 3D printed corner pieces with the sheet steel aligned right in the middle. And then for the lid here, we have four individual pieces that can be 3D printed, and then a dovetail is used to locate them all together, and then Four screws are used at each corner to hold it all together. The screws I ended up using were the ones from Bamboo Lab, so they're pretty easily available. So yeah, this is the electrical enclosure. So let's get to printing and building. So the first piece we have to print is the corner brackets. So there's going to be four of these, and they require the most post-processing because each one requires a heat set insert for an M5 bolt, as that's where the lid's going to attach. And then we need to get some hardware for screwing on these side plates. So each one of these corner brackets has two nuts pressed into it. I did include a third one, but it's not actually necessary. And then we have all the side plates. So the first side plate is going to include a power barrel so that we don't have to use the internal one. Then we're going to be adding three 50 millimeter fans. And then we're going to get all the parts. So we have the four side plates and the four corner pieces. So we're going to start by screwing all of these together with a couple of M3 bolts and then the nuts that were inserted beforehand. So we're going to do this for every single corner. So when printing all these parts, there are actually a lot of <laughs> issues I ran into. So the first one is my printer wasn't actually printing the size that I wanted it to. So I had to take the original parts, or I had to take the original part I printed and then measure how long it was and then scale it up by the factor that I actually needed it to be. So once I was able to do that, I had to do it twice because I also, do, I also had to do it for the lid down the line. So here we're inserting the metal plate into the groove that is gonna be a decent amount of the structure for this one. So at first, when putting this together, I was having a lot of troubles, but once I was able to kind of wedge it into place and just kind of clear some of the plastic, it was a lot easier. What I haven't done in this clip yet is trim the corners. So if you're going to be doing this, I would very much recommend trimming the corners on that sheet of steel, just because it's going to make your life a lot easier because the 3D printed corners might be slightly filled and it might lead to some issues down the line. This side over here has the ports for the uh, 3D printers uh, main board. So I decided that I wanted the USB port and all the other stuff on the outside. But the thing is, if I want to use the Raspberry Pi in coordination with the, uh, what is it, the Octopus uh, 1.1, you actually need to use the USB-C port. And so I made a little extra slot in the back there. And over here you can see me attaching again because I put it together backwards. <laughs> Silly me. But yeah, so overall, it's a pretty easy project. The only thing is, the plate might be slightly too large or slightly too small in certain cases, but... If you're able to work around that, it's not too bad. Here you can see I only put one screw in there because I was having issues. Once I trimmed the corners of the steel plate, it kind of fixed all that, and I no longer had that problem. Here we have the next part. We have the lid. I had the same issue with the lid as the CAD did not match up with the real world, so I had to measure the real one and see what size I got here and then scale the X and the Y individually to make it the right size, along with the top plate there as well. That was probably the biggest pain in the butt for this entire project. But here we are putting together all four of the plates, and then we're gonna use some of these Bamboo Lab screws to put it all together. Now we can grab our box here and get to assembling the lid. We can kind of place that on there, 
and realize that we put it on backwards, give it a nice rotate, and there we go. Now all we have to do is put in our four screws. If you're liking this video, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to post the step file and the 3D printed files for all of these parts on Bamboo, uh, what is it? Bamboo's Maker Lab, as well as the step file on Onshape. So if you decide you wanna try making this yourself, you're more than welcome to. But what I'll be doing is down the line, I'm actually gonna be making a configurable version of this on Onshape that all of you will be able to download. So that'll be a different video and you'll pretty much have full access to it. It'll be open source. So you can make it whatever size you want and make it as cheap or as expensive as you'd like. And now for the final conclusion, should you DIY it or should you buy it? So in total, it's gonna cost you around $8.75 in ABS filament, plus around $10 US for a steel plate, and then three to $4 in hardware. That gives us a grand total of $22, which isn't too bad, considering that saved us $40. And then it takes about 13 and a half hours to print all the parts. So it's honestly not too big of a investment to make your own panel just because it allows you to pretty much make it in whatever way that you want it to. So I would definitely DIY it. So I hope you enjoyed. Please leave a like, comment, and subscribe.